Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Even the best other writers can do the same. Oh, gee, welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, we have, we're going to have quite a show today. I think you're going to really enjoy this. I realize you probably want to get some feedback on the whole Washington debacle, but that's going to go on for some time. Uh, that's politics, folks. That's just politics. I want you to understand that. But just pay attention to the next election, though. When it does come around, then it'll be your time, and then we'll have a major, major discussion. But uh, there are some things in there that we'll probably discuss here as time goes. But I think it's more I think it's more important now to kind of focus maybe on some of the things that are more of interest to you. And that's what basically, that's the direction I've been taking the Voters Digest of late. And you're going to see some very interesting shows coming up. So, but th in this particular show, I, I thought this would be of interest to you. Uh, you know, when you, when you, you there's, the, there's this taboo about talking about some things like HIV and, and sexual transmission d d diseases and oh, sex. I mean, I mean, it just goes on and on and on. But, but I said to myself, well, why not, why not let's do a show and and, uh, and and get into those myths and whatever, and and talk to the their rationale and and their definitions and and just on and on and on. But I think you'll enjoy this. And what we're going to do is that we're going to take about 15 minutes after we've gone in after the show, basically, and and, talk, and open up the lines and see if you can if you want to uh, get some questions in after you've heard my guests. I'm very excited to have a, a guest who who has some background, who knows what she's talking about. And, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing some of her uh, some of her feedback. She's written a book here, and, and, and by the way, Tom, why don't you focus in on this book? It's Behind Door Three. Number three. Number number three. Behind Door Number Three, right? Mm -hmm. See, I see a good issue. She's very good. She knows her thing, by the way. <laughs> Helps me out, too, by the way. Right, Tom? Right. Okay. Choose with your eyes wide open. Jackie Gettner. Gettner with Jen Violi. Actually, Jen was the writer. She basically helped out with the writing. With, with a lot of the, the yeah, the writing right. part of it. Really so neat. it wouldn't I mean, take me a long time. Right. Kind of an interesting piece. Boy. And even the cover, I think I like the cover. The cover is very interesting. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, so like a door knocker, if you will, mm -hmm. with the heart routine. And I, hey, guess what? My guest, Jackie Gettner. How Hi you there. Doing, Jackie? I'm doing great. Good, fantastic. Well, hey, we got a lot to talk about. And I really like the book. I mean, I think it's a really great deal. And, and so, first off, let's, let's talk about Jackie for a moment. You know I mean? Where from? Where, what part of the country are you from? You I originally was born in Chicago, Illinois. Chicago. And I went to school, college for a year uh, in Emporia, Kansas. Okay. And from there, I moved to New York City for a year with my son's father. And then I lived for 25 years in Colorado, and I've been living here for nearly 24 years. Yeah, in the Portland, Portland Metro mm -hmm. area. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. And so what, what do you do professionally? I mean, uh, what, what professionally, you I'm a licensed massage therapist, and I have been since 1987. And I'm also a certified drug and alcohol counselor, which I have been since 1999. Hmm. Interesting about the therapist piece. I mean, I well, definitely want to get into that. I had a little experience, so we'll talk about that, too. Okay, okay, okay that'll good. be great. But now, why the book? How'd you, how'd you get into this? Well, why, why the book? So there's a story behind the book. And um, the story is that when I lived in Boulder, Colorado, which is where I went to massage school, mm -hmm. my oldest girlfriend became infected with HIV. So we were talking about in 1986. And she became infected because, because she had been given pain meds for over 20 years by a physician um, after she'd had a car accident and he just kept prescribing Dilaudids, mm -hmm. which are a very powerful pain medicine, and she became addicted to that. And at one point her family asked me to fly out because they thought she had liver cancer. And I went out there and while I was out there, somebody came to her house and when it just didn't feel quite right mm -hmm. and uh, when he left she didn't come back out you know we were spending our time together and I found her in the bathroom shooting up these pain meds wow. so I was pretty angry um, and I left and I told her until she had six months clean and sober, I really didn't want to talk to her again. Because I, I was a single parent, so I had to find somebody really quickly to watch my kid when her parents, mm -hmm. you know, wanted me to come out there. And I'd given up a job interview and all these things. 
So six months and one day after I was there, she called me and told me the next day she'd gone into recovery. And she had subsequently gone to school to become a drug and alcohol counselor, which was great. <laughs> And then she proceeded to tell me that she also had been infected with HIV, and it had been probably while I was there. What's HIV? Is this, is this brought it to work? What is HIV, HIV, human immune deficiency virus, HIV. Mm -hmm. How does one go about getting HIV? There's many different ways that people can get HIV. But what's important to know about HIV is that it's not any harder than it was to do 25 years ago. Um, there's a lot of, there are a lot of ways people can get HIV, but it's more important, I feel, for using this conversation, mm -hmm. not just to talk about HIV, right, right. but to talk about STDs, STD, and to talk about se sexually transmitted diseases, okay, okay. and about hepatitis C. Mm -hmm. And what my work is about is about the over 50 population. I believe that HIV is and STDs, um, hep C isn't as much of an issue for younger people. Mm -hmm. But my whole project and my whole concern is about girlfriends who are of a certain age, as I call them, which is yeah. the name of my project, right. women of right. a certain age, right. um, which is basically women over the age of 50. Over 50. Mm -hmm. okay. And there's a lot of risk for that um, <coughs> in the sense of in hepatitis C, what we're starting to see is that People have had hepatitis. Hepatitis usually stays um, asymptomatic for about 20 years. So it's that old phrase of if I knew now, then what I know now, I would have done things differently. And so I do believe that we're going to see some of the same stigma as we saw around the start of HIV in the 80s when people were wearing gloves and masks and, mm -hmm. and those kinds of things around hepatitis C. Um, because that 20-year window is coming to a close for when there was a lot of IV drug use, especially in the old hippie days, and mm -hmm. I am totally an old hippie, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, there was a lot, of, a lot of drug use, there was a lot of uh, IV drug use, there was a lot of tattooing, not like there is today, but there was still those kinds of behavior that put people at risk. And that, and with the added use of a lot of alcohol, has put people, a lot of people, at risk for hepatitis C, which is why the CDC has come out recommending people be tested for hepatitis C at least once. And CDC is the Center for Disease Control out of Washington, D.C. And I very openly talk about the fact that I have hepatitis C. Okay. And it wasn't because of my old hippie day behaviors as much as it was working in a hospital before there were universal precautions, which when HIV came to the forefront, then all the hospitals and doctor's offices started taking measures um, so that uh, they could hopefully contain those things and people who worked with people with those diseases would not get infected. So I worked on a psych psychiatric unit at a major hospital in Denver. And when people used to slit their wrists, we didn't go, oh, I wonder if I'm going to be safe. You know, we you ran in there to save the, their yeah, life. Yeah. So um, I found out pretty quickly, but at that time they called it undifferentiated hepatitis because I also have the second rarest blood in the world. So the hospital used to call me down all the time yeah, to donate right, blood. Yeah. And they said, oh, we, we can't use your blood anymore. And I'm like, how come? And they said, well because you have undifferentiated hepatitis. But nobody else knew what that was, and there wasn't a lot of discussion about it. And I was like, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, and I didn't pay much attention to it. So, so as far as hepatitis C is concerned, now today we got the baby boomers. That's a big crowd. That's a big group at this point in time. And these folks are constantly getting exams, you know, right? But a lot of people do not know. Are they they not? just... People make too many assumptions when they go to their medical providers. They need okay. to ask more questions, especially as people, excuse me, start getting older and have more kinds of aging kinds mm -hmm. of illnesses and ailments that go on. Um, because when I was a kid, you just believed your doctor. The doctor was the one in charge. Mm -hmm. That's not the case anymore. And I think it's very important that we all whenever we go for something that's more than just a general checkup, that we take somebody with us because it's really hard when you're caught in the emotion of hearing that you have MS or hearing that you have 
pre-diabetes that you have somebody there to kind of second hear what you're hearing and write it down so you can look at it later. But isn't that what the doctor is supposed to do? Give you a total exam and, and, and you know, blood tests, all that good things? Well, you would like to hope so, but that doesn't always play the case. One of the things that happens around STDs and HIV is that a lot of doctors these days are younger. And unfortunately, they have a little bit of transference, some of them, this is a general statement, mm -hmm. have some transference going on with their own moms and dads. Mm -hmm. So it's like, how can I ask this woman if she's being sexual? She's my mom's age. And in the reality, when I speak with them, I say, because it's your job, you know, you need to get past this. It's kind of like, you know, there's going to be a lot of things in your practice that are not going to be very comfortable for you. But you don't put the person that you're trying to serve at a disadvantage by not asking the right questions. So I, when I talk with women about this project, though I certainly can talk to men as well, mm -hmm. um, I explain to them that they need to ask. I want to be tested for HIV. I want to be tested. I need you to know that I've been sexually active. Is there a chance I've noticed this little lesion or I've noticed this little mm -hmm. sore that won't go away mm -hmm. you know it's just kind of like breast exams you know boobs are really okay with everybody since mm -hmm. Susan Komen came mm -hmm. along okay. you know and we have the big Susan Komen walks and all of that kind of stuff every day in the news we have stuff about rapes and sexual assaults right. on all levels but when we talk about the V word the vagina word mm -hmm. in a healthy way mm -hmm. people like scatter mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. it's it's a very scary topic mm -hmm. and the reality is it's going to kill a lot of grandmas and for me this is about girlfriends taking care of each other and talking to each other not about each other this is about preserving our friends for our, their grandchildren mm -hmm. the other factor that i believe is really important about this topic is one in every three grandmothers is also a primary care provider so if she has a very bad sexually transmitted disease, she has hepatitis C, for which there's quite a bit of fatigue, um, she's not going to maybe be able to take care of these children. And so we're going to put more children into a foster care situation that, hmm. at least in the state of Oregon, could certainly use a little bit more work. So, you know, there's just a lot of aspects to this. It's not just about sex. It's not just about people talking to each other it affects generations up and down from us you know um i think it's very it's i think it's a very pressing thing so what happened with my girlfriend yeah, I, was, is, I, was, I was looking at your book here yeah so you, to, you cited one of a couple of the examples you know that in, sure in, in, in terms of how certain diseases were transmitted why don't right you, why don't you identify one of those pieces that you um talk, let's talk about that uh, so, you mean from one of the scenarios? Yeah, with one of the scenarios you talked okay, about. Okay, so first of all, let me just talk mm. a little bit about why I picked behind door number three. Most baby boomer people grew up with the Let's Make a Deal show on okay. TV. And on the Let's Make a Deal show, and I used to love watching the show with my grandma and grandpa, we, the, the contestant would pick a door. You never knew what was behind the door, but you kind of had an inkling. They kind of gave you some hints and you pick behind the door, right. okay? So I named this book because people are doing all kinds of different things to try to find relationships these days, mm -hmm. and they kind of are playing by the old rules, but the old why is rules so, still I'm not apply. But why is that so, you think? I mean, before we get into that other point, why, why, why are they doing that today? You think is it the advent of the, of the tube, if you will? Uh, Loneliness? Uh, what, what is it? What it's is a it? lot of things. I think it's... Um, apprehension about the future, not wanting to be alone, uh, maybe not had a good relationship in their life and wondering if there is one out there for them. There's also the statistic about, and this is a disturbing statistic for me, that one out of five baby boomer women is going to be homeless. Mm. So when... That's a huge number. It is a huge number. There's a huge number of us out there. Mm. And a lot of women and that's rich were rich or poor, right? Rich or poor, mm -hmm. and a, and and a lot of, a lot of, baby boomer women, during this last recession, either lost their jobs or early retired from their jobs, so they wouldn't lose their job, and then they were kind of stuck in the middle because there's this hesitancy to hire people, 
well, there's not a lot of jobs, as we all know, mm -hmm. which is what the recession was about. But there, there's a hesitancy to look at the value in the older worker. And whereas it, pe people have had a lot of experience, they've not necessarily done anything else in their lives. You know, people have gone to high school, college, and they've had one job their whole mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. uh, in my case, I've had many different jobs. I mean, I've done massage. I've never had a nine to five job in my whole life. Mm -hmm. When I became a single parent, I decided that no one was going to tell me that it was more important that I be at work than to take care of my child. That was my first job. Mm -hmm. So I always work part-time jobs mm -hmm. so that I could be flexible and be available for my son. So the son. therapist sort of gave you sure. that. Sure. So and then becoming a massage therapist certainly gave me that mm -hmm. potential. Mm -hmm. So and at that point, my son was getting ready to go into finishing high school and going into college. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't have that, and they there's a huge fear about stepping outside of that to look at other things you can do. There's some really great organizations like Encore.org, which is a baby boomer think tank that helps people recreate their careers in ways they'd like to have worked but couldn't, maybe while they worked at IBM or Tektronix or any of those kind of companies. But there, you know, people are known by their profession, and if you don't have a profession or you're unemployed, you don't feel very comfortable about mm -hmm. yourself, and you're afraid of running out of money. I do that on a regular basis. <laughs> so right. A lot of us do. Yes, I think I do believe yeah, that that's really do, true. Yeah, so they meet somebody, and this person, and men still have better pensions and those kinds of things than women do. So they meet this man who might be a widower or might be um, divorced, and whatever, and he owns a home, and he's got health insurance, and mm. he's got a bit of, you know, it doesn't have to be a lot of money, but he has a comfortable lifestyle, maybe he has an RV, maybe he has timeshare, whatever, and they meet, this is kind of a safety net for some people, you know, and they figure, oh, well, I can, you know, I used to clean house for Harold, and I used to uh, do the laundry, and we used to have sex once a week, wasn't that bad, you know, I could mm -hmm. deal with that, and mm -hmm. whatever, I can do that for this person, I won't be out on the street. Mm -hmm. To me, mm -hmm. that's a little poor criteria mm -hmm. for being with somebody, but I understand it, because we want to survive, and I believe as women, we have kind of limited ourselves, not so much the younger generations, but certainly in my generation, and a little bit older, there's always going to be people like myself and so many other women I can name who have done things above and beyond and outside that box. Mm -hmm. But the majority of people are really still in that box, mm -hmm. and it makes it hard for them. You know, uh, it, the same could be said, uh, too, uh, for the men, too, right? Absolutely. Just Absolutely. Because, because, you know, the definition in most cases of a homeless, homeliness, you, you tend to identify it with males mm -hmm. more so than women, mm -hmm. okay? And you don't see as many women on the street but there are women mm -hmm. out there too but not, not the numbers that, you know, right am i right absolutely okay. absolutely now, let's get into the, the this whole issue you, you, you were getting into this and I, I broke into the conversation with another piece mm -hmm. but you give us sort of an example as mm -hmm. we go on but but you know oh the scenario the scenario so yeah, i have several scenarios. oh so I so the reason why i picked these scenarios is and i'm sorry because i lost that train of thought for That's a second okay. so my son grew up with a series of books that I think a lot of baby boomer moms, kids read, called the Choose Your Own Adventure books. And there were very small books, very thin books, but there was like a Treasure Island adventure and there was a jungle adventure. And in the book, you came to a certain part in the book and it said, oh, if you want to go looking for buried treasure, turn to page 12. If you want to go climb above the pirate ship, turn to page 21. So it gave you a choice to make a choice in that book and what the outcome would be. So what I decided, because my programs that I was trying to offer were just not very popular, and we can talk about that later if you want, but it was be due to the shame of being seen talking about sex. Yeah. Um, I decided to do a choose your own adventure book for women in relationships. Mm -hmm. It could be used by men. And I'm going to be doing, I'm hoping, a series of specific populations after this. But what they do is, so it starts a story. The four scenarios are, there's a widowed woman who goes on a cruise ship with her girlfriends. Mm -hmm. There's another woman 
who goes with her friend. She's probably in her early 50s, and she goes with her friend, and her friend plays softball, and she meets a woman there, and mm -hmm. she's going to explore possibly bisexuality. Mm -hmm. There's another woman who's in recovery and is a domestic violence survivor who goes to a recovery conference, and the person she's supposed to go with, her sponsor, can't go at the last minute, and she meets a man. So in her case, she might lose her sobriety as well as this whole sexual issue. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth scenario is a woman who's been very sexually active but focused on her career for the, first 25, for the last 25 years. And she comes to this anniversary party, and she goes, but I don't have anything. Mm -hmm. So she decides to try online dating, which... It's not necessarily the best idea, but that was her idea. So this book then breaks up these issues in terms of you get to a certain place in the story and you have to choose which of these things you want to do. Know, so, yeah, so one of those scenarios is about uh, we can do the cruise ship. So this woman doesn't want to go on this cruise ship and and she's not even answering the phone when her girlfriends are calling her and she happens to answer the phone and her girlfriend talks her into it and she finds herself getting excited about going on the cruise and she buys a swimming suit she hasn't been swimming since she was married because her husband mm -hmm. never liked to swim and they go on this cruise ship and she, excuse me she meets this man uh it, within the group mm -hmm. and um she's really nervous about it and so he asks if she'd like to go on one of the day trips. And um, she's not sure whether she wants to go or not. And so that's one of the options. So she can decide because she feels like he's going to come on to her that she's going to ruin the memory of her husband and she kind of cuts him off at the, at the pass yeah, and says, yeah. no thanks, I'm yeah. just going to hang out with the girls, yeah. you know, and then says, hmm, you know, and she goes to sleep that night saying something to the effect of, Oh, Harold, I'll always keep you in my memory. There's no one that's going to replace you, which makes me go, Ugh. And then the the other scenario was, well, I don't mind doing that as long as we can all meet for lunch. Yeah, 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 and yeah. so they meet for lunch, and then the, the, the relationship goes on from there, and it diverses around a couple more times as they drink wine one evening, they go dancing, she finds herself in the room, and then there's this scenario of, she decides she needs to leave, and the guy goes, well, be that way. Or the guy comes to her the next morning and apologizes and says, well, I think we were really both a little inebriated, and I'm really sorry this happened. Could we kind of backtrack, you know, and try to do something with the group again? Mm -hmm. And in the end, the relationship, they shared addresses, and they're going to see each other once they get off the ship. You know, one of the things I was sort of intrigued about it was uh, the whole idea that, that, that and at that age group, you know, the, the big we're talking about um, baby boomers or whatever, mm -hmm. that um, that women at that age were, uh, at, at the point, a lot of women, for instance, men men die off, they tend to say, and then they sort of move in with, with other friends, girlfriends, you know, sure. like whatever. But I was kind of intrigued about the uh, the point that you'd make about um, the homosexuality, you know, actually another one, but it's really, but it's companionship, I mean, how do... Sure, it That's is that companionship. That's first introduction. Yeah, it's just companionship, right? And I, you know, the, talk a little bit the, about that. Well, there was an article. Example. There was an article um, written in More magazine about three years ago about women who, you know, might just be watching a movie, some kind of mushy yeah. movie, and have been drinking wine or whatever, and they're sitting close to each other. And again, it's that touch need. Right, it's right, about that need. skin thing. Okay. And so they're drinking, and, you know, they're sitting next to each other on on the couch, and it might turn into an affection, affectionate endeavor, which then turns into some kind of intimate oh, experience. Or whatever, but... Sure. Okay. And then it could turn into an intimate experience. Would they ever call themselves lesbians or bisexual? Mm -hmm. Probably, absolutely not. The thought of it would probably scare them senseless. Mm -hmm. But the point is, is that they did do that. And because they did that, there's never been any conversation about who have you been with, you know, mm -hmm. those kinds of questions mm -hmm. that I mm -hmm. think are so very important in any relationship. Are they awkward? Absolutely they're mm -hmm. awkward. Mm -hmm. But I'd rather be in an awkward situation than in a death situation mm -hmm. or a very mm -hmm. ill situation. Mm -hmm. So this is not a major 
engagement in the movement as we see it today. No, right? you I don't think the so. Gay, the gay movement, you know what I'm saying? I don't think so. Okay. But but I think it does need to be addressed because when I work with lesbians and I go to uh, gay and lesbian health fairs and those kinds mm -hmm. of endeavors, mm -hmm. gay men will always come up to me and thank me for the work. Lesbian women, majority of them will come up to me and they'll thank me, but they'll say, you don't need to be here. We're not at risk. And I go, really? I said, could I give you this study that was done in 2010? <laughs> because they are at risk. Mm -hmm. And there are percentages, and I'm not good at remembering numbers, so I can't tell you what they okay. are, okay. but of people who identify as lesbian or certainly bisexual women okay. who have sex with men and then don't, tell their other partner okay. you know mm. or other people that they're with it's like oh that doesn't count you know well it does count it all counts so it's 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 really important well why is it such an important issue for the movement that we're in today i mean is it, is it because of a, a, a recognition you know I'm talking, I'm talking the whole issue of of the gay movement if you will you know you hear this big deal but at the same time from the singers, I understand what you're talking about there because mm -hmm. the bottom line is I've lost my loved one. You know what I mean? It's, it's, sure. I, I'd be much, I'd be much safer and feel more, a little bit more uh, outreaching or whatever to another woman, if you will. Right. But the but the new generation is a whole different ballgame. That's this big push. Right? And well, there was trying a, to figure out what's, what, what, what do we do? To, well, there was a bit of the same push in the late 60s. Okay. But we didn't call it all the names that it has today. Yeah, okay. We were just having sex because it felt good. We liked yeah, each other yeah. as friends. We left as friends. There yeah. wasn't any of this expectation and all yeah. these other things. I'll put myself out on a limb by saying... You don't have to. Much no, more. I don't mind. And again, this is a very general statement. Right. In the work that I do as a body worker and mm -hmm. the people that I've worked with in workshops, and I've worked with hundreds of thousands of people around mm -hmm. my HIV mm -hmm. work... And people talk to me very openly. There are a lot of women who have had negative experiences with men, and I'm not just talking about a bad date. I'm talking mm -hmm. about sexual assault, sexual abuse, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff like that, mm -hmm. that feel safer being with women. Mm -hmm. There are also a lot of women, and I would say there's not a lot of women. When you find a man who matches up with you sexually, that's what... Well, we all call a keeper, you know, <laughs> but there are a lot of people out there who enter into these relationships way earlier than they should sexually. Mm -hmm. And then they get pissed off mm -hmm. when this person isn't going to reciprocate in the way they would like. When we were speaking earlier about younger sex, it's mm -hmm. all about that slam, bam, get it done stuff. Yeah. When you're older, it takes a lot more effort and some time to be able to create that, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things we look at in families these days and why kids get groomed for trauma is because the person who's the perpetrator does the things the parents aren't doing mm -hmm. in terms of holding their, you know, how was your day today? Mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. Come sit next to me mm -hmm. and tell me how your school was. Well, mm -hmm. The parents aren't doing that because the parents are busy texting, running kids to sports mm -hmm. activities, mm -hmm. going to work out, doing whatever they do. And so there isn't a lot of role modeling other than the movies, which is oh, the first, pretty are the, are the first period for both male or female. Sure. Where do they go? Yeah, where do they go? We Yeah, we do, talked do about that a little bit, too. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to go. You know, I certainly couldn't go to my parents, mm -hmm. but I also then... My son's friends all felt comfortable coming to talk to me about yeah, sexual yeah, stuff. Right. But if you don't have that role model, kids are going to act it out the way they think it should be. Right, right. And I'm not saying that's good or bad. But then we do that again as older people, right, too. Right. Let's take a short break. And sure. We'll come back. Good, good deal. Good enough. We'll take a short break. Folks, we'll be right back. I tell you, Jackie's got a lot more to say. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
Folks, we're talking to Jackie. I'm not going to say it, getting her, but anyway, mm -hmm. that's her last name or whatever. But uh, we're talking about the, some things that uh, a lot of times you, we don't we don't have those discussions, whether it be with with, with at home or with, with with whatever. But the bottom line is that it, it's been just great. She's got she's written this book called Behind Door Number Three, and and we've been talking about that. And you may want to just go back. You know you know the dates for for the reruns and whatever. You can go back and pick pick it all up. But I want to get right back to the. Well, I, I want to I want to share a couple of things so you. people know how I got to kind of be at this place. Okay. Um, in Boulder, there was the first complimentary in Western Medicine AIDS conference in the United States. It was called AIDS Medicine and Miracles, and I went to that conference to learn about my girlfriend, about this about HIV, mm -hmm. and being a massage therapist and nobody was being touched at that time with HIV, I said, oh, we'll just do chair massage for people at the conference. Mm -hmm. Well, literally, just putting our hand on people, these, mm -hmm. these people hadn't been touched since they were diagnosed. Wow. And so I knew I was in the right place. The other thing that I learned was that people came to these conferences with their family of choice. And most of us have families of choice. We have our biological families, and we have our family of choice. And they came with their family of choice because a lot of cases, their families had totally cut them off because of the shame of HIV. Mm -hmm. And so these people were dying so quickly that there was nothing you could do. You can't cook for somebody who doesn't eat. You can't take them for a ride because they'll throw up all over the place. Mm -hmm. There was just so much of that stuff going on. And so for me, teaching them classes about how how they could touch somebody because people today don't even want to touch somebody mm -hmm. who's dying which is a very important thing mm -hmm. that I try to offer families because that'll help the person if they're not dying and even just seriously ill feel that they're not causing more stress for the family mm -hmm. but it also helps if that person's going to die to start that grief process you know versus the throwing yourself on the dead body mm -hmm. afterwards mm -hmm. which I think is horrible so so I started doing this work. Uh, to this date, I've worked with between 200 and 250,000 people infected or affected by HIV all over the United States wow. and um, in a couple of countries. And so I was nominated for the Kaiser National Diversity Award for my work in HIV in 2009, and I was the only sole recipient for that year. Hmm. And so I got $10,000, which started my project. Oh, really? Okay. So okay. that's what started Women of a Certain Age. This is your first book, I think. This is my first book. And I tried to do all these um, uh, events for women to come and learn how to be better friends so that they could talk to each other rather than saying, did you know someone so was mm -hmm. having... Did, mm -hmm. did, did, did. How were you received? Were you received very well? No, I wasn't received very well, well at all. Why is that so? Because there's a lot of shame behind being sexual, I guess. I mean or coming to find sexual out sexual information. So people didn't come, even though I made it about girlfriends. Mm -hmm. And um, so I went on to win other awards, because other people, this seems to be, there's pop, there's, Portland seems to be not a great city for women in terms of these kinds of topics. Hmm. When I talk or I do things in places like New York City or San Diego, people get it right away. Yeah, yeah. But here in Portland, yeah, they're not quite so willing to jump into the pot with me around this information. So, so, so since the time I won the Kaiser Award, last year I was awarded the Multnomah County Public Health Hero Award. Okay. I've received the Marigold Hotel Project for the Good Award. Mm -hmm. I received a Bank of America Award. I was on the Huffington Post Woman of the Day. I was a Paz Magazine Hero. So I've, and there's been numerous articles about my work in the National... But, but, but a variety of work, though. Right. Right, but okay. it's all been around, this, around topic. this topic. right here. And I've had articles in the Oregonian, in the Scanner, okay. in the Portland Observer. Um, but nobody will get behind that. It's what, like, what, this is such what, a great what, idea because people don't want to put their name don't behind put their it. Name behind the deal. Mm -hmm. So I've won all these awards, but I've been turned down for 19 grants because people have said this is not a high priority. And so my response to that, which is not the most respectful, is I go, we're talking about your mama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that oh, usually that, makes that, people that, stand that, up. That stand up like me. Because, not my mama. Yeah, not because my younger, yeah, because younger people don't want to look at that. And I say, you're the perfect teachers for this. 
You grew up with this education. But they you won't share their issues with them either. No. They won't share no. their, their mind. And, and that's part of the whole background to why this whole thing is so how do kind we break of convoluted. How do we break through this? And that, basically, with some of, that's why you're here on the show today. To right. Try to see if we can break through it and so pick up So part of it is just about women talking to each other first mm -hmm. and not being so judgmental about each other. And I could tell you stories about women who are a little click and they're keeping this one woman away. Uh -huh because of one reason or another and the reality is we need each other hmm. we need each other so much you know you brought and some uh, that. because of your background your interesting background and the therapy aspect of it the massage therapy mm -hmm. aspect of it uh, the thought comes to me do a lot of women actually go to maybe go to a massage just to get to get touched they do really yeah how they, about males do males do the same thing with women they, massages as opposed to male massages? You can yeah, that's the big issue. That's, that's the big, big issue? issue. What, what is, what's the because, issue? Because I, there are a lot of men that go get massage with, from with, women. Right. There are also men that want to have hand jobs done at the end, which is, makes it really difficult to stay legitimate, you know, or to be looked at as a professional. It'd be like going to your doctor and say, while you're down there examining my yeah, prostate yeah, yeah, if yeah. you wouldn't mind you yeah, know yeah, you yeah, know you would yeah. never ask that why would yeah. you ask that of a massage therapist but the dollars come out then don't they in some cases no well you mean for massage therapists yeah, yeah, yeah. they could and, and unfortunately happens, unfortunately the well the, they're in massage therapy and the licensure for massage therapy mm -hmm. now they're requiring and i'm so very glad not that an ethics class every two years mm -hmm. or whatever the licensure period is makes a person ethically clear. But, you know, one of the problems of having younger people with no life experience doing massage and they get these older guys, they go, oh, well, um, let's see, I'm $12,000 in debt. And and I'm not, I'm certainly no, no, not no, saying this about all no, massage this therapists, this but real, this happens this and this is where the complaints come into the massage okay, board. Okay, okay. And it's, and it's very difficult for me because there should be no question. There should be no question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then you have shows like The Client on TV, which is about a, a single mom who's a massage therapist who oh, happens to end up in a prostitution ring mm -hmm. as a massage therapist. And then people expect that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the schools teach how to screen people, but... If you don't have that life experience or you haven't done your own personal work and you've had some kind of trauma, then you're going to just relive that trauma. Hmm. And so then that doesn't do a lot for our profession. Hmm. So touch is really important. Male massage therapists have an even harder time because they don't, really? a lot of male clients don't want a man working on them because right. they think that means they're gay mm -hmm. or they hmm. don't want um, a woman working on them well, they do want a woman working on them, but then they want to see how far they can go. And I have to say, in my hmm. nearly 30 years of massage, that mm -hmm. has only, that suggestion of that other outcome has only come up one time. And that was quickly, quickly You look, quickly like, a, you look like a person says, no, I said, no, you've got to be, yeah, yeah, you've yeah, got to yeah. be friggin' <laughs> kidding me. I said, you have a minute to either retract all of this yeah, right. or you can get up and get out of here. I'm walking out and when I come back, either you're going to be back where we were working because I do believe it's my obligation now, at to that point finish time, this abandoned, appointment. These folks abandoned accordingly? Are they abandoned sort of? Bandit. From being abandoned from, from oh being. yeah no um but you, yeah you talk amongst other massage therapists right, right, right. but you see when you advertise on things like craigslist and whatever it's really hard oregon has a lot mm. of massage schools so it has a lot of massage therapists mm. and i don't believe that the schools which will probably be angry with me for saying this but i don't think they spend as much time as my education did in looking at our own personal issues and where our vulnerabilities might be around this issue you know the, the reason why i'm asking you this because you really you really add to the the worth if you will of a book like this because you are a therapist you know a mm -hmm. massage therapist and you and you're probably meeting a number of people with all sorts of things with on their mind sometimes they open up Mm -hmm. Even in, in this subject matter. Mm -hmm. Fair? I work with a lot of people who have had trauma in their life. Mm -hmm. And they share it with you. Mm -hmm. But I also have people that come into my office that I won't let get on my table, that I won't let get undressed. Why was it, because why they've had trauma. Uh -huh. And so 
the most clear example is I had a client who was referred from a therapist and I came in and this person was standing stark naked in my office, standing up next to the table and I went, oh, hello, I'm going to walk outside. So I'd like you to... Male or female? It was a female. But I said, I'd like you to walk, I'm going to walk outside and I'd like you to just get dressed and we'll start the session with you sitting in the chair because I could see what that expectation was. And so there are times when people don't even get on my table because I do what's called body work, which is different mm. from massage. Okay. And I, it's not really that it's not appropriate. It would take a lot of time and I want to stay on this topic. But it's looking at how experiences you've had in your life affect your body. Mm. It's one of the things that I think is really missing in addiction recovery. And it scares everybody when I talk to people about this. But the body is where the, the drugs went into or mm -hmm. the behavior was created to be able to get the drugs. Mm -hmm. If you don't look at the body in, in terms of it needing recovery also, mm -hmm. you're going to keep relapsing. Mm -hmm. You know, that not always, but in a, in a lot of cases, that's mm -hmm. the case. Mm -hmm. But it's a hard thing to look at. But from a therapist standpoint, as far as the, the person who's being worked on, I, I guess you, you're naked or you just wear your undies and whatever? Uh, wear whatever's comfortable, comfortable for you. For I you. have okay. people that are fully dressed that I do massage on. Right, okay. You know, and I work on teenagers. Mm -hmm. You know, I say you get undressed to your comfort level. Mm -hmm. But to get back to my project, because okay, well, that's very important. <laughs> I know. You'll have to have me on again. What can I say? Okay, well, okay, let's but go what's to important here. about my project <laughs> is... Right. Good. I would really like people to understand this isn't about just going out and just because you wear a condom, you can have sex with anybody you right, choose to. Right. It's about this is our life. And no matter what your spiritual belief is, this is what we have right now. Mm -hmm. How can I do the best to make the person that I want to be intimate with my friend, mm -hmm. not just my sex buddy? Right. You okay. know, right. um, you have a lot more time on your hands. When the the sexually uh, the Viagra and Cialis and yeah. stuff came out, very unrealistic. Like we really? were talking earlier, yeah, right. how many women and men do you know that sit in a bathtub overlooking a field, gazing at each other? <laughs> Not. How many people are just this gorgeous couple who are waiting for the grandchildren to come over when they get the urge? Most people that are involved in this situation, not most, but a good number of them, are people who are single, and. I have to tell you, and I've heard this from women in, in nursing homes and in retirement facilities, these men are acting like they're doing community service. Just because you can get an erection for seven years, oh, sorry, just because you can get an erection for seven years, oh, that's, that's a scary thought, for seven hours. Seven hours? Yeah, that's Viagra, and those drugs are good for that. They feel like, wow, I shouldn't just waste this on one person. Let me go out because... There's so many more women than there are men. Call up the line, right? The hotline. Yeah, yeah, call up the line. <laughs> <laughs> but I, especially in Florida, I saw so much of this. And the women very much are open about talking about it there. And the men are, too. They'll talk to you right about it. So they're receptive on both sides of the mm -hmm. line? There's a John, um, oh, I can't think of what it's called, but... Um, on my Facebook page, Women of a Certain Age, are videos of different... Uh, advertisements, scenarios of people in sexual situations. Mm -hmm. um, and there is one about people in Florida. And this man just blatantly says to the camera, well, I've been having sex like this for 45 years and never used a condom. But those herpes things, oh, I have those once in a while, but there's no big deal about it. I'm just like rolling, you know, going, oh, my God, this is what part John Daly show. That's yeah, yeah, what right, it was, right, the right, John right. Daly show. Wow. And he talked with women, and she says, I just don't want on my gravestone to say I had herpes. And I'm like, maybe this is how people think wow. when they're in their late 70s and 80s. I'm not there yet. But, you know, I don't want to even be in that place. Wow. And it needs to be a personal thing. There's a lot of partner swapping that goes on. Mm, really? There's a lot of partner swapping that goes on here in Oregon. We have places that I can't get into we because have shops, I want to hand regular out. regular shops mm -hmm. where you, one could go and just... So my, my greatest outreach for my project has been last year I got dressed up like a pirate with a hook yeah. and went around with a big pillowcase and said, yeah. if you're going to hook up over the weekend, keep your booty protected. I was a popular girl. <laughs> this year I'm going to be a witch. And if anybody is going to have a Halloween party, please yeah. invite me yeah. because I don't like going to bars and doing this as much yeah. as I like going to parties. Yeah. And I'm going to be a witch and say, 
Um, which and you'll take good care of yourself over the holiday. And this year we even have condoms with Halloween stamps on them. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be trick or treat. Trick or treat. <laughs> yeah. Well, look. Let, let's. By the way, we'll open up the line now. Let's go on and open up the line and and put our put our we, website and Facebook on there. Would you please? Because I think that that's that's quite a bit of information there for you, right? Yep. All the stuff that we've been talking about, the book and everything else, and mm -hmm. how can others help? And you know, you know. Oh, and I'll be at the Hollywood Senior Center on Wednesday. Okay. They're having a health fair from 930 to 1230, and I'm going to do a reading of my book at 11 o'clock. And what are you going to be sharing with the seniors? Um, I'm going to be sharing a part of the book and how why I wrote the book. And any nonprofit organization that I come and speak to, mm -hmm. and any books that I sell, four dollars of the book will go back to the nonprofit. Well, that's kind of neat. You're a nonprofit organization. I too, am right? a nonprofit. So they can contribute if they just want to contribute some money. That's to, right. I have a fiscal doing... agent, which is why it doesn't say .org after okay. my name. Okay. It has .com. But okay. yes, okay. I am. A I know she's got some beads and stuff. You were telling me about that, right. that jewelry you have. So there. this is. Um, I'm a community partner for a program called Bead for Life, which is recycled paper jewelry made by women mm. in Uganda. And I start. This was my girlfriend's project, who started AIDS Medicine and Miracles, and they have worked with. Over the last ten years, they have a nationally awarded program. So I go into people's homes and businesses and speak about their program and sell their jewelry, which then all goes back to them. But it gives me an opportunity because women don't like to talk about sex very much. They like to talk about jewelry, however, and they're willing to do something for some other women, so then I can kind of slide my message in at the end. Mm -hmm. So I'm also looking at opportunities to be able to share this, too. Okay. Let, let's share a little thought, some thoughts about um, where does one go for help, for instance? You, like you said, you got a lot of women out there, seniors for that matter, moms, mm -hmm. if you will, uh, parents. And what, 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 where do they go? What, what, how can for they information? get help? For information. Do they go to, just go online and get the date and should they react to the well the you know the, the online, online dating scenario in my book is that? really i don't know i like does to, that work does it really work for some people it seems to work really well i one of the problems we have is we want to try to put everybody in one box mm -hmm. and we're all in different boxes yeah, so like it's hard to tell we oh. got a caller calling on the air your question and comments please yes caller um Yes, hi. Um, I I wanted to know, I am a woman over 50, and, and I'm not really sure how to start this conversation with my girlfriend, so I was wondering if Jackie could... It's good. Going on. Jackie You're doing well. Jackie, give me an idea. Of what now? Ask your question again. It didn't come out too clear. If Jackie could help me understand how to start this conversation. Oh, how to start this conversation. Just go to my... just. Go to your website? Go to my website or go to my Facebook page, which has all kinds of things. And, you know, part of it is just by saying I care about you and uh, I, I just think there's some information that you're Thank missing you, hearing. Um, I think this book is great. I'm really hoping that a lot of women buy this for their girlfriends and maybe three or four of them get together and go through it together. People that have already read my book think it's just really fun to read without even looking mm -hmm. at the questions or answering them. So you make they, the point it's about very women relatable. Could, like you said, women could get together, take the book, right? Right. And use one of the scenarios, right? And just have a discussion around it, right? Sure. And it, it's it's a very neat piece too, by the way. I, I really like the way you the way you function it. And they even got questions as, as you go through You have the questions and there's places to write. Yeah. And it's good. in large print. Yeah, good. So, I, you know, I'm not sure if that answers your question, but you've just got to sit down and say, you know, I care about you, and I heard this crazy woman on the Broussard show, and oh, yeah, no, this, and, this, this. and I just I just feel the need to talk to you about this. Now, if they want to know more from they you, can call they me. can call you, right? Your phone number is there? Your phone number is on your website? Absolutely. Okay, you want to you give it to them You can call me, 503-790-0974. I'd be glad to meet with a bunch of women over lunch to have a little conversation about this. There you go. That's Whatever good. it takes. No I, taboo, I right? am totally out of the box and about how this happens. Right. It's just important to share the information. Trust me, she is, and she's good. <laughs> Trust me, she is really good. She really has some She has some good information and some, uh, i.e., for you to think, right? That's the whole idea, to think and, and be healthy. Because once you get to the point you, don't, you can get those taboos out the way, one can be a little bit more healthy, right? Right. Okay, good. Again, give us a call, caller. Okay, fine. Now, again, let's let's uh, let's talk about where do we go from here. Uh, again, I'm still concerned about the fact you're still not recognized with not getting you're getting such little support. What, what, so, what, what kind of response did you get with reference to the NAACP and 
So I was at an event for the NAACP, which was very generous. Um, mm -hmm. I got to talk a bit about my project. Um, and one pastor came up to me and thanked me for my work. Um, but I didn't get people at my table like I was yeah. hoping to, to even yeah. take information. But what I think needs to happen is a couple of things. First of all is I think gay men need to wake up. Wake up? They're, In what way? Why, why, well, why because wake a up? lot of gay men feel like whether they have HIV or not, it's their disease kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's very much centered around gay men. A lot of women, a lot of women supported gay men in the early AIDS epidemic. And mm -hmm. those are women who are now my age. Okay. They used to be called fag hags. Okay. And um, they did a lot of things when nobody else was there to do that. Mm -hmm. They are not women that are necessarily educated around their own risk. And all gay men have women in their life, whether they're family members or people they work with. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important that they give back a bit to women around their knowledge of this disease and what they went through so that women don't have to go through this disease. Hmm. So that's a very important thing. I think that also lesbians need to be a little more open about the information and their vulnerability. I believe that insurance companies, I've tried hard to find an insurance company. I mean, if we tested people for HIV, and again, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have the numbers. If you go on my website and look at my year-end mm -hmm. report, it talks about the savings that we would create in the healthcare system if we just tested and were more preventative about HIV and hep C and STD information. That if they would sponsor some of this work that I'm doing so people would be more educated. It would make their st their shareholders happier. It, God forbid, would make our country a little healthier. And the health cost would go down. Because when somebody gets infected, whether it be with an STD or certainly with HIV or hepatitis C, the health care costs go up sky high. Whether you have Obamacare or not, that's still going to be mm -hmm. an issue. But the AC, but the Affordable Care Act, you think that could possibly be a part of it? Do, do well, it's supposed such? to be more preventative. This couldn't yeah, be more preventative. Right. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. if the drug companies were still doing their community education grants, like I used to receive money to go and talk about medical adherence and complementary mm -hmm. medicine, because mm -hmm. that was so important, especially in the early mm -hmm. days of HIV, if somebody like Cialis or Viagra would do that, Let's then that would call. be covered. Okay. Let's take Thank another caller. Call me on the mm -hmm. air. Your question or comment, please. Yeah. Go on. My question is, do you, do you see a difference in people who are receiving your message, you know, ethnically? I mean, like African-Americans right. versus non-African-American people? Good question. Good question. Go on. Um, that's a really good question. Thank you, caller. We got about I want to say yes and no, <laughs> uh, which isn't a really good answer. Um, I feel that there are African-American women who are carrying this message. There's the ARTH, which is the African-American Reach and Teach Project out of Seattle. That's all African, you know, that's all African-American. Um, there's A6 down here. There's the Deltas that are trying to do stuff. But... For me, it's not a racial thing. It's and, just women and across other people, the board, right? It's women across women the board. Women across the board. Asians, and I just Asians, wish yeah. we would see this as yeah, women. But yeah. there are so many other issues that come into play there. It makes it harder. I have to be really mm -hmm. honest with you. It makes it harder. Well, I'm glad you made the point about it. It's women across the board. And it's a very serious situation. And we need to discuss it, right? Fair. Mm -hmm. Just like we're pushing the whole issue of the, the gay community. And people want to understand. But bottom line, sure. this, is a, this is a segment here that, in all due respect, really is not a part of the movement, per se, like it should be. Fair? Right. Th this should be a, 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 a movement. Something needs to be talked about. And that's, it needs to be an intergenerational right. kind Across of thing. I mean, I've had a lot of young girls say, Ugh, my mom, it's just, she keeps asking me to find her somebody, you know, and I'm, I can't even bear the thought of it. And it's like, mm -hmm. well, then refer to one of the resources at the back of my book or is on my website or on Facebook. The National Institute of Aging is one of the best websites uh, around all kinds of issues having to do with aging. It's not just all about sex. It's about the other choices we make when there are a lot of women getting involved with older men who they're turning over their 
uh, their uh, pensions to. If they, you know, their husband left mm -hmm. them a little bit right, well off, right. some man is going to try and not in a general statement. Right could come and try and take that away or they're quick to say oh here's the key to my house yeah. or here's my other debit card and it's like really you're how old and how where is your sense about this you know it's just about support and that's why it's about supporting well, women look, i'm gonna have smarter. you back on but first off what okay. do we what do i get the book where, where you can, we can get only the get the book off my website or at one of the places where i am doing a presentation like website. the hollywood senior center okay, okay. on wednesday or they can call you or they can call that number me. real quick 503-790-0974. And your website again? JackieGethner.com. Okay, or on folks. Facebook. Well, folks, Jackie, thank you very much. You're I welcome. Mean, I think the, the viewers out there really enjoyed the show, and, and we, we'd like to, for them to, i.e., share it with their, i.e., with their, their friends and whatever, have meetings like Jackie su suggested. I think it's well worthwhile. And, Jackie, thank you very much. It's been very, thank you. very interesting, very good, too. Again, this is Bruce Broussard, the Oregon Voters Digest. Do have a good evening, and I'll see you next week with another interesting show. Take care. Have a good one.